Hey guys, today we're going to talk about regex word boundaries. Now, word boundaries are really cool. Uh, they're very useful in uh, basically finding whole word searches or partial word searches uh, in exactly the way you want to find them. So first, let's talk about what a word boundary is. Specifically, a word boundary is what's known as a zero length assertion. And what that means really is that it is that it, it finds a match but then it gives up that match instantly and it doesn't actually return anything. It just returns a positive or negative as to whether or not the match actually existed, right? Whether the match occurred. So what we can do with that, let's just go ahead and jump into it. And you'll, it, I think it'll all be made clear. So let's say I want to find the word sand. Oops, maybe I should say sand. There we go. So I have found sand in all of its various forms in here. But what if I want to find only words that end in sand? right so uh, I don't want to find this one and I don't want to find this one and this one well that's a special case that I don't you know we'll, we'll hopefully get to um, <clears throat> so if I want to find all of the words that end in sand like quicksand then I have to I have to say that I, I want to find sand at an ending word boundary right so I've got sand right here if I can highlight it there we go and I want to and I want to find that at the end of a word boundary. So what I need to do is I need to do whack B, and now I'm getting only the ones where sand is either a whole word because that is still at the end of a word boundary, or it is at the end of a word. So what I'm saying here is I want to find the word sand that's directly before a word boundary. Now, let's talk about what a word boundary is. A word boundary is any character that is not a word character. So it can be a space, it can be a dash. In this case, you can see it's a dash right there, right? So it can be a, a space, a dash, a tab. It can be anything that's not covered by the word class, which means that numbers are also considered words, right? So I could do something like this. I could say three, and you notice how it still finds it because because numbers in regex are considered word characters. I actually kind of appreciate that myself. So, what if I wanted to find quicksand or the word sand at the beginning of a word, like we have here with sand quick? Well, it's the exact same thing. I just have to take this b, oops and move it to the beginning. So now I'm saying I want a word boundary followed by the word sand. And you can see I get my exact same sand here for sand quick. I get my uh, my sand here as a whole word and I get my sand here because this guy oops, let me redo that. So this guy right here, this dash that I finally got highlighted is not a word character. So that is a word boundary right there, which means that it's going to match sand here because it th because now sand, as far as regex is concerned, is at the beginning of a word, right? So it treats this guy and this guy the exact same because it's treating this space and this dash the same. They're both non-word characters. Get it? Okay. But what if I wanted to match only where quicksand was part of a word and it wasn't a standalone word on its own? Well, that's pretty easy. In this case, I would just have to follow it with a whack W+, because that's the word character, right? And now I am getting the only match here, which is sand followed by one or more word characters, right? I could easily reverse that and match quicksand by just taking this guy right here. Actually, I gotta get rid of all of this. And I've gotta say whack W plus and then B. So now I'm saying I want sand preceded by words, right? By word characters, but only if sand is at the end of a word. So if I did something like this, my match would go away now, right? Because sand is not at the end of a word. It's not next to a word boundary, right? It's next to another word character. So, 
I, uh, I, I negate or destroy my match by putting sands there. Now when I take that away, and the same thing happens if I put, say, a dash there. Oh wait, it doesn't happen if I put a dash there because a dash is still a non-word character, right? So that still plays. But if I put, say, a six there, then that goes away, right? If I put a dollar sign there, it still, it still plays because a dollar sign is not a word character. So you get the idea. Anything that is a word character will be recognized. Anything that is not a word character will not be recognized, right? So let's say now that I wanted to find only, I wanted to find only where quicksand, where sand is part of an entire word, but I don't want to match the entire word, right? So you notice here, I've got word characters followed by sand at the end of the word so that's a match and it matches the entire word quicksand but what if i wanted to what if i wanted to match the entire word but i only wanted to capture the word sand right well that's going to be done with a look around and i'm not going to discuss look arounds here i'll discuss look arounds in the next video and then I'll link to it uh, at the in, in the post for this one. But I'm going to show you how to use uh, forward lookarounds in this one, and I think you're going to really like this. So stay tuned, and we'll go back with we'll come back with lookarounds. But for now, that's how to use word boundaries.